What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video and today we are going to pick up where we left the last video. In my last video we looked at the myth that consuming soy will decrease our testosterone and increase our estrogens. We also look at my blood test results, my testosterone results after three years of eating soy every single day. And in that video we actually came across two case studies of two, just two, unique individuals who had side effects because they consume way, 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 way too much soy. And in this video, we are going to try and find that upper safe limit. Because from the conclusions of our last video, soy has no impact on testosterone levels. However, because there's those two cases, two very unique cases, uh, we are going to try and find out what's the upper limit for soy consumption. Is that any level that you shouldn't go past because it will affect our hormones? Let's look into that. So for you to understand what I'm going to talk about, you need, you need to know that the phytoestrogens present in soy are called isoflavones and are actually really, really healthy for us. So when I say isoflavone levels, I'm talking about the phytoestrogens in soy. So a good place to start to analyze this is to look at the Japanese population who have been eating soy for thousands of years. How much soy do they eat? Because in them we know that there was never found a case of side effects or something like that. So at least up to the level of the Japanese population we know it's safe. And the Japanese population eats between 20 and 80 milligrams of isoflavones a day. So we know that up to 80 milligrams of isoflavones a day it's safe. How much soy is that? We are going to take a look at that in a minute. We know that in 2005, France established a limit of 1 milligram per kilo of body weight. 1 milligram of isoflavones per kilo of body weight. And in 2002, Italy established a limit at 80 milligrams per kilo of body weight. Okay. So, all the values that we have right now are up to 80 milligrams. We know that up to 80 milligrams is perfectly safe. But these are very, very, very precautionist numbers. In my research, I actually found a report that tried to establish an upper limit for soy intake, for isoflavone intakes, and they concluded for a limit of 75. Where do the two cases where they found adverse effects come in this graph? Well, they come about here at 350 milligrams of isoflavones per day for a long period of time. Other than that, I actually found a study where the subject supplemented up to 900 milligrams of isoflavones and of the 20 participants, only three had adverse effects and it was not a causal relationship between the soy consumption and the adverse effects. It might just happen because they, well, had to happen. So as we can see, we got some top recommendations of 80 milligrams per day, but those are really precautionist because we never found problems under the 350 milligrams. So for healthy individuals, you can probably go way, way higher than the 80 milligrams a day. In fact, the report that I found said that most of the studies on this topic are done on pre-postmenopausal women and in older men. So if you're a young dude working out, living a healthy life, you can probably go up to 150, 200 milligrams of isoflavones a day and you would be okay. So what does that translate into soy grams, soy product grams? Take a look at this graph. In this graph, you have the amount of soy per 100 grams of soy milk, tofu, textured vegetable protein, tempeh, isolated protein. And as you can see, to hit the very precautionist upper limit of 80 milligrams a day, you would need to eat a lot of soy. Putting this into perspective, you need to eat 500 grams of tofu a day, 600 milliliters of soy milk, 100 grams of textured soy, 100 grams of tempeh or 100 grams of soy protein isolate. 
So as you can see, you could eat a lot of soy daily and you would be below the 80 milligram limit. But you don't even have to be below that limit because as we discussed before, that's a super, super, super precautionist limit. And for healthy people, you can probably go up to 150 or 200 milligrams of isoflavones a day. So that's it. That's how much soy you can eat. But there's always a but. There's another thing that can come into play when it comes to soy limiting. And that's IGF-1. IGF-1 is insulin-like growth factor 1. It's a growth factor that we want in a certain amount, but higher than that, it will help cancer develop. One of the reasons why vegans appear to have lower levels of cancers, of all cancers, is because vegans have lower IGF-1 than meat eaters. Because meat protein increases IGF-1. And here's a question with soy. We know that soy has a protein very, very similar to meat. And the question is, does the protein from soy increase IGF-1? And this was actually tested. It was tested in a very interesting study with three groups. The meat eaters group, the vegan, regular vegan group, and another vegan group eating 7 to 18 servings of soy a day. They were eating Tons and tons and tons of soy, that's like 4 liters of soy milk a day for a year. And the goal of the study was to see if this amount of soy could raise IGF-1. And it concluded that yes, the IGF-1 levels were actually the same on this group as the meat eaters. But, there's another but, the cancer incidence and the, and the adverse effects were not Found. And that's because, as we talked before, soy has actually been shown as protective for cancer. So it's protective for cancer and it raises IGF-1 that is bad for cancer and they kind of cancel each other out. But as you can see, soy does raise IGF-1 and that's why we can establish another limit. Like Dr. Michael Greger did here, he looked at the research and their studies up to three servings of soy a day that have shown to be safe for IGF-1 and their studies from 7 to 18 but between 3 and 6 we don't really know but it's probably safe okay between 3 and 6 is probably safe for IGF-1 and how much soy would 5 servings translate to? well it depends usually the serving size is on the package but for soy milk it's around 250 milliliters so you can eat 1 liter and 250 milliliters a day. For tofu, it's usually 75 grams, so you can eat 375 grams a day. And for textured vegetable protein, it is usually 40 grams, so you can eat around 200 grams. And be sure that your IGF-1 is probably not rising, okay? Also, I do have to point out that when it comes to soy protein isolate, it has been shown to increase IGF-1 more than all other plant proteins and even more than whey protein that comes from milk. So you should actually stay away from soy protein isolate. If you want to take a protein supplement, go for pea, rice, hemp, all of the other ones. Do not take soy protein supplements. But even if you take soy protein supplements, if it's just one scoop a day or something, you'll probably be fine. That's it for the video, hopefully you enjoyed the video, hopefully you've been enjoying these regular uploads lately and these more scientific types of videos. These are my favorite videos to make and they take a lot of research, but I'm not sure if you guys can truly understand me with my accent or if my accent bothers you and all of that, so let me know down below. Like the video, like the video, subscribe to the channel if not subscribed already. And I'm gonna see you all in the next video.